Welcome to the Bioneers, revolution from the heart of nature. The hour is striking so close above us, so clear and sharp that all our senses ring with it. I feel it now, the power in us to grasp and give shape to our world. It's all alive. It's all connected. It's all intelligent. It's all relatives. We stand at the threshold of a historic opportunity in the human experiment to reimagine how to live on Earth in ways that honor the web of life, each other, and future generations. It's a revolution from the heart of nature and the human heart. In this series, The Bioneers, Revolution from the Heart of Nature, we celebrate social and scientific innovators with breakthrough solutions for restoring people and planet, creating a future environment of hope. Deep Ecology. In 1973, the Norwegian philosopher Arne Ness coined that term and launched a global movement. What Ness said was that from an ecological point of view, quote, the right of all forms of life to live is a universal right which cannot be quantified. No single species of living being has more of this particular right to live and unfold than any other species, unquote. This deep ecology perspective rejects the idea that the earth and its living treasure of nature are just an utilitarian storehouse for human use, or that humans rank above or below anyone else in the web of life. Deep ecology extends an inalienable role and right to life to all beings, to all of nature. But, as the naturalist Aldo Leopold observed, one of the penalties of an ecological education is that one lives alone in a world of wounds. He said such people must either harden their shells or be a doctor. Joanna Macy decided to be a doctor. She's a deep ecologist, scholar, and lifelong activist. Her quest has been to extend our human circle of love and compassion to all beings. This is Inalienable, Belonging to the Earth Community with Joanna Macy. My name is Neil Harvey. I'll be your host. Welcome to the Bioneers, Revolution from the Heart of Nature. Carl Jung believed that at the core of each life is a question that that life, that person, must pursue and is fortunate if he or she discovers it. Well, I know what the question was, that, uh, and I became aware of it in my mid-40s, but it probably started with my birth. And I'm glad for this moment with you to be able to share it the question was how to be fully present to my world, present enough to enjoy it and be useful, while at the same time knowing that my species, we human species, are progressively destroying this world. Wow. That splits you right down the middle and puts you back together again, over and over again. It has asked me to keep my eyes and heart open to what I see happening, to unblock the feedback loops and help others do it too, to speak the truth. In her over 84 years, Joanna Macy has demonstrated by her actions and her being that healing the world and healing your heart and soul have to go hand in hand. She dissolves the false dichotomies between outer and inner, mind and heart, outrage and compassion, despair and ecstasy, humanity and nature. Her intellectual achievements as a scholar, systems theorist, and eco-philosopher are formidable. She wrote classic books, including Thinking Like a Mountain and World as Lover, World as Self. She's a renowned and influential Buddhist teacher. 
yet she embraces the wisdom of all spiritual traditions. Her worldview is expansive, enfolding other life forms and past and future generations into all our human decisions. She began a Bioneers Conference talk with a quote from poet Reiner Maria Rilke. I've been circling around God, that primordial tower. I've been circling for thousands of years, and I still don't know. Am I a falcon, a storm, or a great song? Same for you. That's same for you. I've learned that in my deep ecology friends as we tell the truth of what we feel and know is happening in our world, as we let others speak through us, other life forms, that the life in us is so big it cannot be reduced to one social role, to one curriculum vitae, that our roots go back, back, back to the beginnings of life, you know that, to the first splitting and spinning of the stars. And all of that journey forward, our human journey and those before us have brought us to this point. And we can be so grateful, I am so grateful to be alive now, because <laughs> for life to continue, well, that means and you know it in your heart, and that's why you're here at Bioneers, and that's why Kenny and Nina are so faithful in bringing it, that we have to make a giant step in our consciousness. We have to make real what we dream and know and intuit, that we are one planet people, and we can only be one planet people if we honor all our differences that we belong to one living, sacred body of Earth. And when we get that, my brothers and sisters, you know, when we really get that, we'll be able to achieve the ongoing singing of the song of life. Isn't that so? And there have been other times that question leads me into places that are so painful. And again then, I am grateful for Rilke, Reiner Maria Rilke, who said toward the end of his life, in a sonnet to Orpheus, the last one, he said, quiet friend who has come so far, feel how your breathing makes more space around you. And then he says, let this darkness be a bell tower, and you the bell. And as you ring, what batters you becomes your strength. Oh, get that! <laughs> as what you batters you, then you realize that you're made for change. And I love it that systems thinking helps us see that with the positive feedback loops where the change is so great that the old values and the old norms and the old self-images and the old worries and feuds don't fit anymore. And that you have to die to the old forms and resurrect in a larger self, wider rings. I have felt that again and again, and I love the word from systems that conveys that, because that's been true at every stage of the evolution of life, and in many stages of your life and mine. And the word is positive disintegration. <laughs> because you are uh, having to die to images and concepts of yourself that are simply too small. That there is something so big that wants to happen through us and that we must allow it to happen through us if we want life to continue on this planet because the engines of destruction are strong. So strong they're hard to look at. Joanna Macy knows we all have good reason to dread opening ourselves fully to the magnitude of pain and destruction our species is causing. 
Can closing our hearts or burying our heads in the sand or in cyberspace lead to a satisfying life for us, for future generations, or the Earth? Joanna Macy believes the way forward is with open, broken hearts. She experienced that battering with her decades of work to stop nuclear power. Through my son, Jack, I'd gotten involved in the 1970s with nuclear energy, bringing it to a halt, stopping the reactors. Boy, one failure after another. <laughs> Trying to stop Seabrook, online it went. Trying to stop a problem they were having at North Anna Plant, windward of Washington, where we live. Failure again. But in the process, I knew what it was like to link arms with other people toward a big, important project, and that it felt so good to be working together that somehow the fact that we failed that lawsuit against the Virginia Electric Power Company, I was so glad that we did it anyway, because I'd come out of it different and changed. And I'd come out of it realizing more clearly what radioactive contamination does, what it does with its emissions at every reactor, even where there's no accident, and what it does to the body, and the miscarriages and the birth defects and the cancers and the leukemias, even when it's in normal production. And realizing that, realizing that my government did not seem ready, nor did industry, nor the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, seemed to feel any kind of concern to talk to us about that, to help us deal with it. I knew that I had colleagues in distant time, and the beings of the future were at my side and in my heart. Because in dealing with nuclear contamination, as is happening when we deal with fracking now, those chemicals last forever in the water table. You know that. And the GMOs, that fiddling with the genetic material, you can't undo it. And so suddenly I found that my life didn't just belong to the present moment, but that my life was linked to those generations from now, indeed centuries, indeed millennia from now, who will be inheriting what we're doing now. And therefore, instead of just sitting around feeling bad, I felt I could hear them. And they said, Joanna, get up off your duff and let's do something. <laughs> Joanna Macy helps others get off their duffs with her workshops called The Work That Reconnects. The workshops have been adopted and adapted by schools, churches, and grassroots organizations around the world. Considering that in our roots, certainly biologically, but culturally, there's a longing for the sense of belonging that once we knew. And the inner ravages of feeling uprooted, sort of like a pea in a shoebox, <laughs> is one of the great, it's a form of suffering in this time. But I think that what makes it very hard for everybody is that this is built into this disparagement, this desacralization of the living earth, even though in our time we have found, thanks to systems thinking and system science, a Gaia hypothesis then theory, then demonstration that the, our, our planet is a living system. And we could go with that, but we're all caught, this culture is caught in an economy, a political economy, that makes it almost impossible to nurture and certainly to express feelings of reverence and care for the earth. And by that, I'm talking about the industrial growth society. Uh, I like that term. I borrow it from a Norwegian 
deep ecologist Sigmund Qualoy, uh, because it says it all. It's driven by industrial power of enormous forcefulness in its drive to efficiency and that operative term growth. Uh, this is cast into, in many ways, into regulations, into legal arrangements, and certainly into the belief system of the economists and government and industry that the earth is simply a basis for us to pursue this uh, industrial growth society. And by growth, that means that growth in what? You know, are we talking about growth in wisdom, growth in health, growth in productivity, growth in happiness? It's one thing only. What is it? Yeah, it's not just money, it's whose money? It's profit. Whose profit? And so it's the corporate profit and market share. But what this turns out is an attitude toward the earth that turns the earth into a collection of resources. Earth as a supply closet and as a sewer that you extract from the earth what you need for your products or for your fuel, for your energy. And then, since it's a linear process from source to sink, out at the other end, the sink and the earth and the atmosphere are the sewer. So I'm caught myself in feeling that we have to liberate business practice and the attitudes of our culture away from this growth economy. What do we want to grow? Joanna Macy is growing peace between people and nature. But to get there, she says, we have to transmute our fear and grief into constructive, loving action. More when we return. This is Inalienable, Belonging to the Earth Community. I'm Neil Harvey. You're listening to The Bioneers, revolution from the heart of nature. To explore all available Bioneers radio shows, video programming, and more from Joanna Macy, please visit Bioneers.org. It's impossible to hold an open heart amid the wholesale destruction in today's world and not have your heart break or just become numb. Joanna Macy believes that when we encounter our grief, we need to go straight into it. One of the ways that I have found like a doorway to my belonging to the earth, uh, despite all the conditioning, despite all the speed and distractedness of uh, contemporary life in the industrial growth society. There is what I have found both in myself and in the work I do with groups of people in connecting with the earth, we call it the work that reconnects, is to discover what a function, what, a, what magic happens when we dare to get in touch with our grief. We usually cover it over. We're usually in too much of a hurry. When we do pay attention to it, we often buy into the mainstream thinking that this is reduced to some problem at the personal ego, some neurotic tendency, uh, some dysfunction, some expression of personal neurotic or craziness, but to instead to welcome it and give it expression and not be afraid of it, to not be afraid of what comes up in us when we look at a clear cut when we look at a 
river that has been dammed and dried out. When we look at fish kills swamped up, us floating up on us covering a, the shore from toxicity in the water, to get in touch with that grief. When the Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh was asked, what do we most need to do for the sake of the earth? Joanna Macy was moved by his response. And his answer was not some strategy, and it was not some problem solving, or it's not sit down on your zafu and meditate first, or any, it wasn't in terms of any action we'd undertake, but it was to feel within yourself, to hear within yourself the sound of the earth crying. So I have found consistently that uh, while it's nice to, you know, urge ourselves to bliss out over the beauty of earth and feed ourselves that way, that there's something, a, a sure fire way to know your belonging is to know the grief you carry and to bow to it. For Joanna Macy, tears are a kind of holy water. They bless our pain and connect our hearts with the sound of the earth crying. They can transform our grief into action. You know, when things get to feeling too awful, too terrifying, too grievous, I wake up to the fact that I can be glad I'm here. I feel that our looking, these questions are soul deep. Don't hurry for an answer. The anguish of those questions are pulling us together for work together. Many avenues for work, many proposals, but don't stop asking the questions. And if possible, you can say, at a girl, at a boy, you showed up. You're here. You haven't checked out. You haven't closed your heart. You haven't closed your eyes and ears. You're with your people. And you will find that being with your people and with your planet holds a, a secret, a secret wisdom. I was reading from Rilke's poetry, but in the, that very sonnet where he says, let what batters you become your strength. Let this darkness be a bell tower, and you the bell. And as you ring, what batters you becomes your strength. And then later on in the sonnet, it says, in this uncontainable night, be the mystery at the crossroads of your senses and the meaning discovered there. And if the world has ceased to hear you, say to the silent earth, I flow, and to the rushing water speak, I am. You're one with it. That is the great gift. Not your quick strategic moves, but going into that place where you know something that those before us couldn't know because we're with our earth in a time of such travail. And in that travail, we can find ourselves held. What batters us becomes our strength. Dare we think, dare we see in this the moment, the real possibility when we can rise to the immensity of a challenge and become what we know we can become it, one people of Earth with those who will come after us. And our lives will be big. So my prayer is one of thanks, enormous thanks for your lives. Thanks for all the new ways you walk and open your hearts and that we seize this moment. And so I end with this. Honeys, you just wait.
all will come again into its strength. The fields undivided, the waters undammed, the trees towering and the walls built low. And in the valleys, people as strong and varied as the land. Shall we let that happen? Joanna Macy, inalienable, belonging to the Earth community. You can explore more Bioneers radio shows and video programming online at Bioneers.org. For information on attending the National Bioneers Conference and Bioneers events in your area, please visit Bioneers.org or call 1-877-BIONEER. The Bioneers, Revolution from the Heart of Nature is a production of Bioneers and Collective Heritage Institute. Executive Producer, Kenny Ausubel. Written by Kenny Ausubel. Senior Producer, Neil Harvey. Managing Producer, Stephanie Welch. Distribution is by WFMT Radio Network. Our theme music is taken from the album Journey Between by Baca Beyond and used by permission of Hannibal Records, a Ryko Disc label. Additional music was made available by Sounds True at soundstrue.com. For more music information, please visit radio.bioneers.org. The opinions expressed in the Bioneers Revolution from the Heart of Nature radio series are those of the presenters and are not necessarily those of Bioneers and Collective Heritage Institute, the underwriters, or this radio station. My name is Neil Harvey. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join the Bioneers in inspiring a shift to live on Earth in ways that honor the web of life, each other, and future generations. This is program number 1314.